Welcome, everybody, to Dead Talk Live, and today our guests are Connor Floyd and Gigi Gustin from the movie The Last Deal, which is now available on streaming on demand. I want to welcome the both of you here today. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good. Got my coffee. We, we are good, man. Thanks for having us on. Oh, it is my pleasure. It is my pleasure. So let's start off with talking with the movie. Uh, premiered in theaters, now available on streaming on demand on February 3rd, just a short while ago. Gigi, uh, I want to start with you. This story focuses on the impact that legalizing marijuana, in this case California first, had on the street dealers. What was your thoughts on the story overall? Well, you know, I was really excited when I got the script because I, I hadn't quite read anything like it. You know, um, I blow through so many scripts. And <laughs> the reason why I liked this one was because it was so original and territory that I hadn't seen be explored. So that's why I wanted to be a part of it. Definitely. It, 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 I've never seen a movie that actually showed the impact that it had on the black market trade of marijuana once it became legalized. Yeah, the news media really didn't cover it. Television, movies never covered it until now. So it was definitely a unique take and something that we as viewers have never seen before. Now, Connor, your character, Marcus, uh, is one of uh, the lead characters, Vincent Byers. You come across as someone who was sort of born with a silver spoon in your mouth, like entitled. Uh, what were your impressions of Marcus when you first heard about the character, read him, and so on? Well, uh, me and Gigi actually have a pretty similar story. We uh, we both auditioned for different roles and, uh, you know, went through the whole callback uh, process. And then afterwards, Jonathan both gave us a call and said, you know, we're going to go different directions with here. Some things have changed, but um, we, we still want both of y'all to be involved. And so both of our characters were written in for us. And when, uh, yeah, yeah. And so when, uh, when Jonathan kind of pitched the character to me, he goes, you know, it's a small piece of the pie, but you get to go, you know, uh, you get to do a round with Anthony Molinari, you know, the, the star of the film. So he's, he's a real savvy vet. You know, he's been around for a while. He's been a lot of, uh, been in a lot of really big projects. Mm -hmm. So I was really excited to act with him. Right. Uh, but as far as Marcus goes, man, I don't, this guy's just kind of an idiot, I think. <laughs> ID? What? Yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, I think you nailed it. A little entitled, you know, he's, uh, you know, we, we were playing with the fact that he might be like one of those SoundCloud kind of YouTube yeah. artists, you know, and so he's uh, taking advantage of that market and racking up as much cash as he can from all those streams and uh, just living his life. You living know, he's got up. A living it yeah. up. Now, Gigi, your character, uh, we see with Marcus along with another woman, uh, it sort of goes into feeding into the uh, aspect that we're given of Marcus, that he sort of, whatever he wants, he gets. He has money, and, you know, women are after him because of his money. Is that how you see your character, whose name is Brittany, as being with Marcus just for what he can do for her, get for her, and so on? Yeah, I think so. I think she's here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> you with me just for my money, Gigi. <laughs> so sorry, you got me. But yeah, it's, it's and I loved I loved the way that um you know Connor played his character because it really gave me some room to play. And he's like, "Hey, Brittany, get my ID," you know. And then because that was kind of a lot of that was improv, and we just kind of played with it. So we kind of created that little dynamic together, like on the spot. But I was able to play off of that just because of what Connor brought to the table. That's awesome. Now, Connor, you are a big regular on The Young and the Restless, a hugely popular, long-running soap opera. You've been on there now for almost two years as Philip Chance Chancellor. Um, now, going from a soap opera to films, is that a major transition that you have to make? I mean, you're still on the show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's totally different because uh, I had done, you know, things like The Last Deal. We actually shot that before I was on the show. So mm. uh, coming from film, going to the TV was uh, it was a big adjustment just because, you know, 
that show we're shooting on a sound stage uh you know we got four cameras shooting there's a you know the lighting set uh it's just like little things that uh you kind of lose from film where you kind of kind of lose the freedom you know yeah. but that scene that me and Gigi did uh Jonathan was like get after it do whatever you want I don't care we'll follow you you know you're not worried about cutting off somebody's light or getting in somebody's camera angle or something like that and so movement kind of becomes restricted on those sound stages just because of the camera angles and the lighting so yeah it's just little things like that it was really interesting as i was looking up your guys's career path you both got into the business around the same time you both have about the same amount of credits which is a lot uh under your belts as well now Gigi, you have quite a few upcoming films uh you've been really promoting nightmare at precinct 84. Yeah. what can you tell us about nightmare and your role in it if anything at all yeah so you know it's a, it's an anthology film so you know just for the people that don't know it's just a feature but made up of short stories with a with a wraparound and what happened was i had actually um self-financed um a short film called night flirt that i hired someone to write just for me and um i wanted to take i wanted to there's not a whole lot of major platforms for short films so i wanted to take it farther mm -hmm. so i had kind of rounded up some friends and said let's put our short films together like find a way to finance yeah. a wraparound and do an anthology so we actually have one short film from the uh from called um uh we all scream from the directors who did the gallows the oh, gallows one and two yeah. and i love the gallows i love horror I've, films. I've interviewed the the two directors and i for the life of me i forgot their names i'm so Chris sorry and travis. yes yes yeah travis, they're, they're fantastic yeah. I've interviewed i was just them. elated i was just elated that they were willing to be a part of it so we're partners with them and we're doing a screening later this week and we hope to get distribution within the next couple of months. So that is <laughs> awesome. Now, um, you wrote uh, Nightmare at Precinct 84. You were part of the writing team. Is writing right. something that you want to pursue as your career progresses? Uh, to be honest, no. Like I have a story by credit. I think that I have good ideas, but to be able to um, put it on paper yeah. is a completely different feat. And um, that's not where I think I'm strong. So for me, I'd rather be like, I have this idea, like, what do you think? And then I'd rather hire somebody to write it, you know, because I know that it'll be done right. And then me, like, I, I just want to act. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot from producing short films and jumping on board and I've gotten semi good at it, but I like to be, in front of the camera for sure i totally hear you now connor <laughs> uh, a lot of actors have gotten their start uh in in daytime tv uh a lot have stayed and done continue doing daytime tv while doing films now the schedule on daytime tv is grueling i've spoken to a lot of actors who are, are or were on soaps how do you find the time now you said you did the last deal before you got on The Young and the Restless. Have you done any films since you've been on The Young and the Restless? I haven't. I've been strictly this for, you know, the past year and a half. But it's kind of funny. A lot of these films that I did beforehand are, you know, they took a little longer in production. So now they're finally coming to light. Uh, like the last deal, there's another movie on Lifetime that's coming out next month. Um, but yeah, it's just been all soaps for the last year and a half, baby. Now, do you see moving forward uh, as your career progresses, you think you could find a balance to continue doing feature films while keeping your role on The Young and the Restless? Or is one or the other going to have to give? No, I think so. I mean, I love film. That's why I got into this. So it would be it would be nice to get back to that down the road. Now, you can do it all. <laughs> yeah. You stab it. <laughs> I just bring it up because I know, I mean, daytime TV, you're pushing out five new episodes every week. And... Yeah, it's kind of something I didn't know until I, I got into this was the workload. And it's, you know, we Tuesday through Friday, we're shooting. And it's, uh, you know, for all of you production junkies out there, we're shooting 60 pages a day, which is just unheard of. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's more than that. And it's a it's a well-oiled machine. And if you cause any complications, you're not going to fit in. You've become so, yeah. 
you've become a, a it's sort of a fan favorite on the Young and the Restless. What has been the reaction towards you? You uh, think so? Am I fan favorite? <laughs> well, you know, you know, in a little roundabout ways. I I do occasionally. I used to watch so because my uh my mom watched them growing up and so on so i grew up watching subs and i occasionally tune in and out sometimes but what has been the overall fan reaction towards your character on on the show you know it's back and forth i remember when i first got on everybody wanted me to cut my hair and it made me it really upset me like, oh, i think that this guy needs to cut his hair he looks dirty or something you know <laughs> but uh you know everyone's everyone's really nice now everyone's been very accommodating very welcoming uh it's kind of funny when all the the different storylines will hit it kind of depends on if someone's going to start ripping india on instagram or something like that yeah <laughs> people get very heavily invested now yeah, Gigi, yeah. you have done a lot of horror films so far uh do you consider yourself a fan of the genre oh absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Hardcore. <laughs> so, like, moving forward, you want to, you know, you said you're happy being in front of the screen, being an, an actress. Yeah. You, you know, doing more horror. If if someone, let, let me put it this way. If you're, let's say, 5, 10, 15 years from now, you've been sort of cemented as one of the new horror scream queens, would you ah. be happy and satisfied with that? Yeah, Absolutely. Like the new Jamie Lee Curtis, you know what I mean? I see it now. I see it now. Put it in the universe, baby. Put it in the universe. <laughs> I'll try. Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis is the ultimate. Like I've seen all the original, like the original prom night, the original terror train, the original Halloween. And I, I go to these late night random obscure screenings all the time that no one wants to come to with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hardcore fan. <laughs> and I know you are. You know why? Because Terror Train is the original. They redid it recently on TV. The original Terror Train with Jamie Lee Curtis is not a movie that a lot of people know of. So the fact yeah. that you knew that says it all, that you are a hardcore horror fan. And the fact that you mentioned it impressed me. Uh, before we go, I want to ask both of you the same question. And how did you guys get your start into uh, your, your break into acting? We'll go with Connor first. Man, I, I break in the act. I don't know. I feel like this might be my break, man. This is like, uh, this is a, this YNR, this is a great opportunity for me to get in front of a lot of people and uh, uh, consistently work on my acting. So I, I feel like this is, uh, this could be my break. Do you, would you recommend for uh, people trying to get into this industry? Like, uh, of course, any role you can get, you'll take it, but. Would you yeah. give them the advice that, you know, getting into a soap opera, even as a really guest appearance on a single episode, is a great way to get, you know, your feet into the door? Yeah, I think so. I think so, man. There's a lot of actors that have been working for, you know, 40 plus years on that show. So if you can get around these guys and learn as much as you can, I mean, they they found the secret sauce. They know they know how to keep working forever. Exactly. And uh, like we were just talking about, it's a it's a workload. And, you know, if you go in, it's a, it's about what you make it. So if you go in and give it 100 percent, you know, four days a week for however long you have to shoot and uh, you'll come out the other end and you'll you'll really fine tune all those acting instruments you have. Interesting. Now, Gigi, how about you? How did you get into acting? And how did all do? Did you know from like early childhood, this is what you wanted to do? Well, my I guess my journey is pretty interesting. I did start out as a child actor. I did, you know, plays and theater and Chuck E. Cheese commercials. And then actually what happened was my parents split up. And so my mom had to get a full time job and there was no one to drive me up to New York. I was living in New Jersey at the time mm -hmm. um, for auditions and bookings. So completely fell out of it. But as I got a little bit older, I, I was always obsessed with film. So when I was like 18 or 19, I decided I wanted to get back into it and that I wasn't going to go to college. And I, I landed um, I landed on this reality competition show called American Grit season two that John Cena hosted. Mm -hmm. And I won $250,000. Wow. So I okay. used that. Yeah. I mean, taxes are a bitch. But, <laughs> but so I used that to move. Um, I was 20 when I got on the show. And, um, and then I moved to L.A. Um, when I was almost 21, when I got my check. I, I used it to finance my move to 
Los Angeles to pursue acting seriously, but I did struggle with people just wanting to put me on other reality shows for a little bit, yeah. which is partially why I dyed my hair blonde. I wanted to change my look. And I fell into the horror family pretty quickly because I think honestly, I just manifested it because I, I love horror films so much. I, I fell into the circle pretty fast. I did one short film that um, premiered at Scream Fest. And I just have been obsessed with everybody in horror and working in independent horror ever since. And even gone as far as, you know, financing my own projects just to be able to do even more. As a fellow New Yorker, I mean, I was born and raised in New York City. And I, I find it interesting, you moved from the New York area to Los Angeles. Now, New York, of course, is known for Broadway and its theaters and yeah. stuff. But, you know, you being in this industry know that all the big time executives, they're based out of New York. Hollywood is Hollywood. That's where like the casting directors are and all that. But did you ever contemplate, did you, in your mind, did you think I have to move to LA to start my career? Did staying in New York and trying it there, was that ever a possibility for you? Um, to be honest, not really. Like I was pretty dead set on finding a way to move to Los Angeles, partially because like I could get a call right now and be like, we need you on set in 10 minutes yeah. and I can do it. And that just wasn't a possibility in New Jersey. And New York is a lot of theater and also modeling. And I just, I'm, I really love just in front of the camera work and I just want to do film and TV. So this seemed this seemed like the right move. I mean, and I knew that if I I knew that if I had even given myself the idea of like maybe I could stay here and make it work, that I wouldn't make the jump. So I just like I saw the open window and I jumped out of it without thinking um, because I didn't want to second guess myself. Well, good for you. Good for you, <laughs> Connor. The Young and the Restless that shot in L.A. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, I know there's only maybe <laughs> one or two soaps that are shot in New York. I want yeah, to thank, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to thank the both of you. This has been a fun conversation. Uh, Connor Floyd, Gigi Gustin. The movie, guys, is called The Last Deal. Uh, you can get it on your favorite streaming video on demand platform right now. Check it out. It's a, it's a great take on something that we said earlier. You don't really see much of in the mainstream media or on movies and movies before. It's what happened to the black market marijuana trade once it became legal so definitely check it out i want to thank our guests again connor Gigi, our audience those of you who are tuning in live and those of you who'll be watching later on on behalf of all three of us stay safe stay walking bye everybody thank you